let's go. Let's go, let's go. Show you guys today is one of my ways of training puppies. Um, this is a true, tried and true process that I've done for many years. Now, you guys can apply this right at home with, with, with the puppies that you, you raise. But like I said, there are several different ways. This is just one that I utilize and things have to go right to, to do this particular process because the first thing you have to do is catch a rabbit. Um, but I have three young puppies here that I'm bringing on. I, last week I exposed them to the outdoors. You know, they've been pretty much in, in a kennel for, you know, their life. They're five and six month old. So I would let them out right around the kennel. They would just run around and play. But last week I started incorporating them, bringing them to the woods and letting them kind of roam through the bushes and, and they played and all that good stuff. But what happened at that particular that they start understanding when I start calling what that meant. Let's and go, let's go. Time to go. I start giving let's go, let's go. Like, you know, here, here, here. Let's go and all that stuff. So that's what they learned, you know, last week. Now I'm going to expose them to a live rabbit that I caught yesterday. Right here, and I'll show you guys in, in a second. I have a, a circle of pins that I had modified chicken wire around it and I'm going to put the rabbit in here and I'm going to let them see this rabbit and they're right here so they're going to see this whole process of me count you know dumping the rabbit in and all that good stuff and I'm sure they're smelling this rabbit as I'm doing that but I'm going to put them down individually I'm going to see which which one is perhaps the, the boldest um, hopefully all of them have that that attribute of being bold hey hey quiet so guys just hang in there i want, want to just show you this process and uh and we're going to see what they're going to do now typically once they've done it for a while we don't want to stress a, a rabbit out we don't want to do it too much so i'm going to make this quick when i put all of them on the ground i will eventually raise this end of the pen up and the rabbit typically when they're getting a new environment they typically run in the open so I have a lane right here so I'm hoping that they'll run down this lane and the puppies will follow now they may give mouth and they may not but the idea hey, hey, the idea is for them to, to see it visually smell it and they, that rabbit veers off into the bushes it will be a great thing to hear them lock on and start running, but that very seldom happens. So hang in there with me and I'll show you guys exactly how this is done. As you can see, she's pretty aggressive. So what I'm gonna do is try to catch her and put another one out. Like I said, we don't want to stress this rabbit out. 
It's pretty much the same thing. Okay, he's getting a little mouth. Now guys, I'm going to let all of them out. Okay. Now when all of them get here on this side, They absolutely know nothing about running a rabbit, so. Uh, just trying to use that nose. That little female went back to where, okay, this one. Hey, 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 hey. See that one female, and she's the oldest, guys. That's why she's uh, acting as if she has a little bit more about herself. So, uh, pretty much what we wanted to accomplish has been accomplished. We wanted to understand what it takes and that's putting that nose on the ground after after uh, they lose sight of it very very young know nothing and like I said she is the oldest so 
issues. Has a concept of using that nose. So, hopefully you guys got some out of that. That's how it's done. Hey guys, just want to expound a little bit on what, what we just did here. Um, as you saw, all of these puppies do have that aggression that I kind of look for in puppies. You know, I, I, I don't like a shy dog, um, so I like an outgoing dog, a dog that really, you know, have that boldness. And it just translates to any and everything that they do going forward. You know, um, if, if, if I'm competing with them, that boldness, that, that drive makes them fight for the front. And as far as competition, that's what we need. We need that dog to be up front and not just lay back, not be that dog to lay back and, and let the other dogs just take over, have that competitive spirit. And, you know, just by seeing how they all react, you know, to the rabbit, I can tell, you know, all of them have somewhat of, of that type of personality. The next thing is um, that I want to share with you guys is that I've started puppies from three months of age all the way to eight months of age and nothing someone told me this is all of me you know coming up with this analogy is that a puppy is just like a child you know there there are kids at three years old in this world that can read fluently but that's a rarity you know that don't happen all the time so I took that and I and I and I kind of applied it to my puppies and now I don't force it on them I, I kind of let them mature get to a point that you know the puppy is kind of gradually taping off and they'll start to be more tentative to what they'll be doing once you start you know giving them that information um, so in other words where I used to start all my puppies three and a half, four month old. Now I, I typically wait to that five month of age um, to six or seven month of age. Like I said, I do not force it because you can give them that information at such an early age and they really don't comprehend it because they're not mature enough. You know, the brains is not developed to that point that they can really take it and, and utilize it and go forward. And like I said, there are some dogs that can, but the majority of them don't. So. I just learned that over the years of dealing with dogs and seeing puppies and how they respond, I get a better result when I start them a little bit later than, you know, the way I used to at the four, three and a half month old. So uh, you guys can and can can apply this to, to 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 your training when it comes to, you know, a different way. If, if you've never done it this way. Um, it really works guys they they went they eventually went back to the box and started smelling around the box so they have a concept of that smell in their in their brain now so when i start walking them around and possibly a rabbit is in the, in the road and he skirts off to the side they're going to remember this day where they chased that rabbit and how fun that was to them and eventually they'll start putting it together i can't see it but i can smell it and that's when they they will begin trailing, and eventually will begin opening on the track. Again, um, not gonna hold you guys long today. You will definitely see a progression in videos when it comes to these dogs, just like I do most of my dogs that I train and and raise. Um, and we're gonna see how they progress. I really do feel like I have a a group of uh, three nice young puppies going forward. Um, just you know looking at them in the kennel looking at them around the kennel um, last week and today I see nothing that that's really you know a concern as far as going forward and, and not being able to be a good rabbit dog they showed me a lot in those um, few times that I've had them out so um, until next time run those dogs stay out here in these bushes that's the only way you can make dogs guys it's two ways to get dogs you can buy one that somebody else has trained or you can put a whole bunch of time on something you get very very young and time will definitely result 
and whatever they are whatever their blood say they're going to be if you give them the time that's what you'll see so until next time over and out